So, it's been a bit of time now since the big PSVR 2 announcement that we just got. It's settled a little bit, and I wanted to take this video today to kind of talk about the possibilities of what a PC PSVR 2 compatibility means, the extent of it, whether we'll get access to all PC VR games or just a few, whether that'll be wired or wireless, whether it'll be integrated into the PS5 or not. So, we're going to talk about all that today because there's a bit more nuance to this than I originally thought there might be. It's not just a plug and play, at least I don't think. But let's head straight into this. So, first of all, my first question is, how will this thing even connect? Per Sony's statement, they say that they're currently testing the ability for PSVR 2 players to access additional games on PC to offer even more game variety in addition to the PSVR 2 titles available through PS5. This doesn't mean necessarily that we're going to be linking to a PC through the power of the PS5. It seems to be separate from this wording, but we'll get into that in a bit. But connection wise, I think this leads me to believe that it might be a wired connection. I think the PSVR 2 runs through a certain type of display port that's slightly old and only works with certain drivers or certain GPUs, if I'm understanding that correctly. So there might be a little bit of a workaround with an adapter to get this thing up and running on most modern GPUs, say like the 3040 series or different AMD GPUs. So it's gonna be a little bit weird to see how they go for that and how they're gonna distribute that. If it's gonna be like the old PSVR where we got an adapter for the PS5, maybe they'll go down that route. I'm not sure. This brings on even more questions like how will the haptics work? The haptics are one of the main things I love about the PSVR 2 headset in the headset and in the controllers. So will games be able to access that? How will developers on PC be able to access that? Will that transfer over naturally? We don't know. Same for eye tracking. We have no idea whether dynamic foveated rendering will be supported or not. If we're able to play PC VR games through say Steam VR, Sony are gonna need to have this link cable and a driver to support it with possibly their own PlayStation VR software on PC. This isn't gonna be a simple plug and play solution. And maybe we'll even have just a PlayStation VR app on PC with certain PC VR games instead of say a Steam VR setup where you plug in your PlayStation VR and Steam VR recognizes it as PSVR 2. So there's a lot of questions with this. I really think that if they can get dynamic foveated rendering working on PC VR games, if this is a plug and play solution through wires, that will be massive because that will mean that people like me with medium range PCs will be able to bump up the graphics quality of PC VR titles that we're playing to run them at higher frame rates because at the moment there's no dynamic foveated rendering on the Quest or on say the DPVR E4 that I currently use so my graphics options are good but limited compared to what the PS5 can produce combined with foveated rendering. So if we get foveated rendering on PC VR on certain games if Sony are talking to developers on PC that would be amazing for people with mid-range PCs like me so we can bump up our graphics quality. That will make this a real, I think, hit for PC VR because people will be able to buy a headset that enables them to run games at a higher fidelity because they're using foveated rendering. That will give this legs in the PC market. But before we talk a bit more about the PC market overall, let's talk about the other option for PC VR gaming with the PSVR 2 which bypasses that completely and makes it so that this isn't really linked to a PC directly at all. Now, the other way this could possibly work is through Steam Link, through cloud streaming, meaning that you don't need access to a PC, but there'll be a built-in Steam VR app on the PS5 that you'll boot up, and then you'll essentially have access to a Steam library through streaming instead of actually plugging your PSVR 2 into a PC. That's the other option here. And I see a lot of people throwing this one around. I personally am not sure. Sony have gone the streaming route recently with the PlayStation portal that they just released. So this could happen, but it all depends on whether or not they can get that Steam VR app working if that's what they're doing. This would link into as well their wording here where they say access to additional games, not the entire PC VR library. They weren't very specific with that, but it would make sense if it's just Steam VR focused because there are other VR platforms on PC where you can play VR games. It's not just Steam VR, but I could see them just focusing on Steam VR as a whole. So those are the two options we have. One could be a wired plug-in with an adapter with the driver you install, and the other could be you play it through your PS5, but you link up to a cloud library on Steam VR and play games through that. I personally, if possible, would like both, but if I had to choose one, 
I'm kind of struggling here because on the one hand, it would make it very easy just to transport people's PS5s around, they wouldn't need a PC. It would make it so the entire PSVR 2 crowd has access to SteamVR with no additional hassle. But that also means we'd be stuck with a solution that only works if your Wi-Fi can support it and will suffer in quality and compression because it's streaming. If it was a plug and play solution instead straight into a PC, because of the DisplayPort tech in here that's not going through USB-A I'm assuming, we'd get some very clean visuals. That's why I use my DPVR E4 as my main PC VR headset. It's because even though it has the Quest panel in it, it is DisplayPort, which is pretty much the highest fidelity you can have in terms of streaming through a cable. If PSVR 2 gets that, that's what I'd love to see on PC VR because then you'd have no compression at all. In stupid terms, that means on a PS5, a Steam VR app would be a little bit blurry and fuzzy depending on your internet connection, whereas plugging straight into a PC would look crisp and clear. Now, even if the PSVR 2 didn't have official Steam VR drivers, if we did get a plug-in solution on PC, this could mean that modders could get their hands on the PSVR 2 and make it work with Steam VR and make Steam VR kind of think that the PSVR 2 was a different headset. This is an option because some software, such as the DPVR software, can trick Steam VR into thinking that the DPVR headset is an Oculus Rift S, I believe, which is what I use it for, meaning you can play all sorts of games. That could be an option. It's just gonna be interesting to see whether this is a Steam integration or just specific PC VR games are being adapted to be able to work on the PSVR 2. If it's that, it begs the question, why aren't they just being ported to the PS5? So we'll have to wait and see. My money is on a Steam VR update, which allows compatibility with it with a cable link. So we'll see. Anyway, moving on, we have a lot to talk about in terms of what this means for the PC VR market. It means that if this straight works with PCs, PC VR people now have access to a $500, £500-ish headset with potential eye tracking with games, great haptics if they're supported, and OLED panels. Granted, there are Fresnel lenses, but a lot of people will take that trade-off. I also take that trade-off. That's why I love the PSVR 2 so much. It's the OLED panels. Don't mind Fresnel and people may be driven to pick up the PSVR 2 as their first PC VR headset if it works that well because OLED will make games like Half-Life Alex, Flight Simulator, Blade and Sorcery, Boneworks, Bone Lab, Into the Radius look incredible. These are games that I played on the normal Quest displays and they look good, but on OLED, they will look amazing. That's what I'm most excited about and I promised I'd stay calm in this video, but that's just a really exciting thought to me. So yeah, this could be a big hit in the PC VR market. And if you're a PSVR 2 user who's exclusive to PS5, you may be wondering, why should I care? Now, you should care, because the more people that buy into the PSVR 2 for PC VR, if we go down that road, means more headsets sold, more money for Sony and their VR division, and potentially more accessories, more games, and a headset in the future, PSVR 3 for us. So more money into our ecosystem too, which would be a great thing. I think has the potential to be a big hit. I'm excited to see how it lands when it eventually makes its way over there. Now, my penultimate point is actually just throwing a random theory out there. This could be completely wrong and probably is completely wrong, but the thought occurred to me that we did get talks of Valve allowing Half-Life Alex to be played on PSVR 2. Now, today I had the thought that maybe these talks we were hearing about weren't to port it to the PS5 and the PSVR 2, but to get the haptics, the eye tracking and all of the bells and whistles of the PSVR 2 working with Half-Life Alex on PC. These things don't just work natively, but with Valve's help and Sony's collaboration, they could get those features working for one of the flagship PC VR titles. Maybe that's the collaboration we heard about early last year before the headset launched. So it's possible, who knows? And potentially if they are working on a PSVR 2 port for Alex anyway, that could be announced at the same time that the PC VR support is announced. So PS5 users wouldn't be feeling left out by that point. But maybe just a thought that occurred to me, perhaps that's what we heard and that's where those rumors stemmed from. But that is just a stupid theory. Don't take my word as gospel at all. It's just a thought I had. The last thing I want to touch on here is what does this mean for the channel? And um, overall, to be honest, not too much in terms of content. I'm going to stick to focusing mostly on PSVR 2. If you've been around for a little while or looked at my backlog of videos, you'll know that I cover both flat screen, PC VR and PSVR 2 games with a strong focus on PSVR 2. I've never really explained why to you guys it is that I focus on PSVR 2. One of the main reasons is you, you guys. PSVR community is fairly big to be honest. The Reddit has quite a lot of people in it for one metric. 
but we feel quite tight knit and I see a lot of you guys regularly in the comment section talking and interacting with me and each other and that tight knit community just feels quite nice to be a part of and that's one of the reasons I focused on the headset. Also for my own sanity because covering multiple headsets, it's a lot of work. I also have a degree to do, a life to live. I would be stuck inside all day if I was to focus on more than one platform and it kind of mostly helps me narrow down what I want to do. So. What would change um, with PSVR 2 PC support is that you'd probably get a couple more videos of me specifically talking about PSVR 2's compatibility with PC, how I found it, certain game playthroughs maybe. But overall, my PC VR videos would stay the same. I would just maybe mention that I'm playing these games on PSVR 2 and how I found them. And the main focus would still be on the PS5 because that's the main platform that I'm on. So overall, content wouldn't change too much. It would have a little bit of a shift for maybe a couple weeks or so when it first launches and then after that we're back to normal so that's just the content side of things if you're wondering I get that some people won't care about that so <laughs> fair enough but anyway those are my thoughts I'm very excited for the future of this I did not expect this announcement when it came yesterday so please do let me know what you think thank you all for watching thank you to anyone who's considered joining the patreon or memberships those are now set up in the link in the description below thank you to Luke Bentley for supporting on patreon you keep the channel going with your donations and help me live and make videos. So thank you so much. If you do feel like liking and subscribing, that would be appreciated. And I hope to see you all in the next video.